I guess the reason I was got off the money part and got on this on change you can bank on is if the church would change, the people of God would come out of tradition. And in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, it says if my people, not the world, not America, not, not, not uh, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, whatever, if God said if His people, those who are called by His name, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, now wait a minute, Let's just, let's just do this change you can bank on. Let end time watchmen put it to you like your preachers won't put it to you. Okay? It says, if my people who are called by my name. So God's talking to the preachers, the prophets, the priests. He's talking to the people sitting in the congregation that call themselves Christians. He's talking to those who claim and name the name of God. Okay? So God's saying, if you'll change, well, wait a minute. And all of you listen to me out there. Whether you believe in God or not, listen to what end time's telling you. I'm fixing to make a whole lot of sense here. God's saying, you who say you're of me, you who are the church and the preachers, the prophets and the priests and all of you that claim my name, okay, that go to church on a Sunday, if you'll humble yourself, if you'll repent and, and, and turn from your wicked ways, my God in time, I like you better every minute. Well, I thank you out there. I appreciate you, buddy. I saw you lifting your hands. Just a little joke there to try to break the monotony up. But God's saying His people need to turn from their wicked ways. Not the world. Not the people in the bar. Not the prostitute that's laid with five men in one night. But the church. Yeah, I got emails. The, the thing is, some of these pastors don't understand is they'll get stuff and they'll say stuff about end time. But what they don't know is guess what? When they say them dirty things, them people subscribe to me or people that watch me will send me a message about what they've said. In other words, they're being exposed for who they are because they have a spirit of jealousy about them. They have an evil spirit about them, a controlling spirit that don't you get into this territory. We preachers own this territory of preaching the Word of God. Don't you step in here in time and get in our way and make us look like a bunch of fools. Well, I just want to make you be what you are. Just want to back you up in what your life career is. But having said that, in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, it says, My people who are called by my name humble themselves, seek my face, turn their wicked ways. God says, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Aha! So obviously since the abortion is just ramping it up since Roe versus Wade, it ain't changed. Obviously God ain't heard from heaven to heal the land and put an end to it because His people have not turned from their wicked, adulterous... Uh, uh, when I say adulterous, I don't mean that the preacher screwed another woman. I mean spiritual adultery, whoring after other gods beside God. Like whoring after the government as, as if it's God when it ain't. It's a bunch of corrupt friggin' men that half of them, half of them write bad checks, the other half stay drunk, and, 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 and the rest of them, they just don't give a rat's behind about serving God, but they serve another God, Molech or some other small G God, but yet you're going to bow to them, and you think by bowing to them, somehow you're going to get the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How stupid could that be? I'm just a voice in the wilderness. Am I comparing myself to John the Baptist? No, I'm not. I never said I was. I'm just a voice in the wilderness. I don't have the pretty suit on, okay? I'm not accepted to preach in the churches. Because I'll tell you like it is. And I'll remind you, they had all the nice outfits on the first time Jesus was coming when John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. There's one coming that I'm not worthy to even latch your sandals, John said. All I'm saying is this. He's coming back again. He's already been one time. He's coming back again. And Jesus said, I'm telling you right now, it would be the same way as it was the first time when He came. Listen to me. He also said as it was in the days of Noah. Eating, drinking, marrying, giving into marriage. In other words, they didn't listen to Noah. 120 years. 
God was preparing him to be inside of an ark that God told him to build. Change that you can bank on is what I'm giving you tonight. They laughed in the scorn. They laughed Noah to scorn. Because they knew God. Noah didn't know God. They knew God. They knew what God would get mad about and what He wouldn't get mad about. They knew how far they could push God's buttons without God getting back at them because God was long-suffering. They kept thinking they could push Him further and further and further. And America has pushed Him so far until the judgment has already been pronounced and stamped. And it's coming. Because... God's people would not humble themselves. They would not seek His face. They would not turn from their wicked ways. Therefore, God cannot heal a land that won't turn from their wicked ways. As long as we got abortion and thievery and people's money being stolen out of their pockets to pay to a small G God government that ought to be in hell already. It's on the way. God's got a day for them, buddy. And God's got a day for everyone that supports them. Because they pass laws that are contrary to the Word of God. Oh yeah. Just totally opposite of God's Word. And yet, we're supposed to bow to that government. Man, give me a... I'm not going to do it. I may be short in this life. It may be fixing to be over with for me. But I'll go out of here serving God and not the government. See, i got more guts in my friggin' big toe than you do, preacher man. Or you that sits on the pew on Sunday. And by the way, Sunday's not the day of worship. Friday, sundown to Saturday is. God never changed it. It's just man did. And you just decided to go with man rather than God. Bet you like that one too, don't you? But yet, you say, well, God ju God's justified in saying that I can do it on Sunday. Well, everybody's looking for a temple to be rebuilt too. But I got news for you. The Word of God said, God said, I won't dwell in the temple made by hands anymore, but I dwell in the hearts and the minds of the believer. What are you going to do with that one? What are you going to do with that? See, the church is not the building that they're building, these million dollar places they're building to make it comfortable, to get the, to get the, the temperature within two degrees of what Granny wants it or in four degrees of what this old man wants. Is that He's been so daggum hateful since he was 50, now he's 95 and he's still hateful. And he's got to have it just right for him to show up. My God help me. Where have we gone? What has happened? What happened? I'll tell you what's happened. Change that you can bank on has happened. Because we have forsaken God and we have allowed as a nation the principalities and powers of darkness and evil to control the system of America known as the federal government and the local government and the state government and the churches. By and large. Not all of them, but a lot of them are controlled. By evil spirits. And, and by the way, I was talking to a good friend of mine today, or tonight. He gave me a shout. And I tell you, I would love this man to death. He's a good guy. He really is. He's got a heart of gold that God put in there. God placed in his heart the things that he pronounces out. Is he perfect? No. I, mean, I hadn't known this guy long, but I mean, he's my friend. He's a brother to me. You know, we're talking about things that, that pertain to now and to God and all. And I said, look here. You know, mess me up. I was going to talk about this on videos. Now I'm going to have to speak on this and on evil spirits and, and, and the principalities and things. And you know, but I believe God had planned this today for me to talk to Him tonight. And that's why I begin with change you can bank on. And that's why end time is bringing it up to a spiritual note. And I want you to hear me. I don't care whether you believe in spirits or not. Listen to me. I'm coming back with another video and let you know that there are familiar spirits in the church. What is a familiar spirit? A familiar spirit is a spirit that seems like it's of God, but it ain't God. That's a familiar spirit. I'm going to come back on the next video and show you change that you can bank on that's in the church today that ain't God. So don't leave me. I'll be right back.